they lived happily ever after. Stop for a moment and let that be true. They lived happily ever after. It may be the most beautiful phrase in the entire library of mankind. Why is it that the ending of our favorite stories can bring us to tears and to hope and to joy? Because God has set eternity in our hearts, friends. Think of the stories that you love. Remember how they end. And then Aslan turned to them and said, You do not yet look so happy as I mean you to be. And Lucy said, We're so afraid of being sent away. And you have sent us back into our own world so often. No fear of that, said Aslan. Have you not guessed? Their hearts leaped, and a wild hope rose within them. There was a real railway accident, said Aslan softly. Your father and mother, and all of you are, as you used to call it in the Shadowlands, dead. The term is over. The holidays have begun. The dream is ended. This is the morning. And as he spoke, he no longer looked to them like a lion. But the things that began to happen after were so great and beautiful, I cannot write them. And for us, this is the end of all the stories, and we can most truly say that they all lived happily ever after. But for them, it was only the beginning of the real story. All their life in this world and all their adventures in Narnia had only been the cover and the title page. Now at last, they were beginning chapter one of the great story which no one on earth has read, which goes on forever, in which every chapter is better than the one before. And I am undone. What if it were true? What would it be like to have a wild hope rise within you. Our enemy is a thief. And of all the things that he has stolen from us, he has taken away the magic and the wonder and the joy of the happily ever after. To those who live without faith, he has said that death is the end, that this life that you have is as good as it gets. <laughs> no wonder that people eat too much, drink too much, watch too much TV, it's too much to bear. If we allow ourselves to feel even part of our longing for life as it was meant to be, for intimacy and beauty and adventure, it's too much to handle. And so those, they just check out. But to those of us with faith, he has whispered an even more diabolical lie, worse because it's draped in religious language. You've heard it in church a hundred times, if you've heard it once, that we will worship God forever. When we've been there 10,000 years, 10,000 years singing? It sounds like hell to me. I mean, seriously now. Right, church is okay, but a weekend in Maui beats it hands down. I mean, even though we were given paradise as our home, this wonderful world with all of the adventure in it, we will be sent to church forever because that's better somehow? That is not what's written on our hearts. That can't possibly be the happily ever after. And I have some great news for you. That is not the good news. It is not even close. Act 4 is the kingdom restored. It is paradise regained. At the end of Revelation, Jesus promises something absolutely wonderful. He says, Behold, I make all things new. Not, I make all new things. He says, I make all things new. Picture the last scene in Titanic. I think it's the secret to the movie's success. Jack is dead some 80 years ago. Rose is now an ancient woman. Her life fading away like the photographs on her nightstand. And something in us feels like this is the way all stories end. That eventually 
everything is just lost. We're taken down into the depths of the sea and we see the great ocean liner, the ship of dreams, crushed and rotting at the bottom of the sea. And then, slowly, almost imperceptibly, a light begins to break in. Light as brilliant as the first light of creation. It sweeps through the ocean liner and it restores and it renews and it, it sweeps away all of the rubble and suddenly it is restored. The deck glistens like the first day it was made in the twinkling of an eye. And the ballroom doors swing open and we see all the great hearts of the story and lover and beloved are reunited. This happy ending is taken right out of scripture. It's the wedding feast of the Lamb. You see that? A great party is underway and the bride and the bridegroom and all the noble hearts of the story and the world is made new. Look, all of the miracles of Jesus are illustrations for the sermon, okay? And the sermon he preached was the coming of the kingdom of God. Now watch, what happens to the blind when they come into the kingdom of God through Jesus? Yeah, they see. I mean, suddenly the beauty of the world opens before them for the very first time. They see color and texture and dimension and the vast vistas of the earth. And the deaf? What happens to the deaf when they come into the kingdom of God through Jesus? Yeah, they hear music and laughter. They hear their children's voices for the first time. And the lame get up and start dancing and the dead are raised and he gives them back to their loved ones. Do you see the point? They're not random proofs that Jesus is the Son of God. They are illustrations for something. He is trying to show you what it looks like to make all things new. You see, this is what I'm promising to you about your life. I make a new heaven and I make a new earth. This is the great ending of Titanic and it's the ending of Gladiator where you see Maximus very much alive and healed of his many wounds, walking through the golden fields of Spain to be reunited with his wife and his son. It's the great ending of the Lion King, where the evil one is cast down and the beauty of Eden is restored. It is the ending of our story. Paul says in Romans 8, that the whole creation groans for the day of its redemption waiting until it is restored when the sons and daughters of God are revealed. You see that? It's a new heaven and a new earth. That's right. We don't go up to some eternal church service in the sky. We get the kingdom back again. This is our story. This is our happily ever after. And it's that ours that pierces me most. It's the reunion of the great hearts in the story. When I look back at the movies that I love, like the end of Apollo 13, it's the restoration of those boys back home that brings me to tears. It's when the fellowship finds Gandalf no longer dead, but alive, not fallen in the mines of Moria, but Gandalf the White, whom death can never touch again. And then you see Frodo and Sam rescued from the slopes of Mount Doom. And when they wake, it's to a bright new morn and the sound of birds and the laughter of their friends. This is our story, you see. This is what is being offered to us. Jesus says, behold, I go to prepare a place for you. If I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and take you to be with me. I hope you've enjoyed this taste of epic, the story that God is telling. And it was just a taste. And so for the full experience, come to RansomedHeart.com slash epic. And let me tell you a little bit about Ransomed Heart. We're a little ministry with a big message. And we have three things we're after. We're trying to recover the treasure of the Christian gospel. I mean, what most people think Christianity is about these days is so small and so far from what God really is like and what he's doing in the world. We want to get that treasure back. And we want to see it, secondly, restore the lives of men and women. 
We are a gospel of restoration. God wants to heal our lives as men and women so that we can live in this story. And then thirdly, we want to help you walk with God, to have an intimate, conversational relationship with your God. So come to RansomHeart.com and browse around, see what we're all about.